Well, good evening. It's good to see everybody. I want to welcome all. Welcome our visitors. It's good to have you with us. Go through announcements before we get into our worship service. The uh, scripture reading book from the book from, will be from the book of Ephesians, chapter six, verses eleven through seventeen, and we'll have it here shortly. Um, got some good news. Kyle Siebenshu was baptized last night. Josh White was baptized last night. Jacob White was baptized last night. So that's an exciting time. And uh, all three of these young men decided that they've been, been talking about it for a long time and they decided it was time that they did it. So uh, after either in between this and services or, or uh, after ser Bible class, or after Bible class, by all means, make sure you, you welcome them and say hi. Uh, things coming up. For us here, it's Sunday, Friends and Family Day. And we will have a meal after the morning worship service. Um, no set menu, whatever you, your favorite dishes are. Bring enough for your family and a second family so that we have plenty of food to, uh, to be able to uh, host all the, all the visitors we hope we're going to have that day. So that's coming this Sunday. Let's not forget that. And, and remember to invite your friends and family. This is, a, this is what it's for. So bring people. And uh, we'll look forward to, uh, to meeting them and seeing them. Uh, this weekend, uh, actually starting uh, Friday night, there is a gospel meeting at the Lee May Church of Christ. And Matt Haynes is, is the uh, speaker for that. Uh, then uh, April 22nd, a gospel meeting starts at Collinsville. Uh, Church of Christ, and John Grubb, one of the missionaries we support, will be the speaker there. So a couple of really good opportunities coming up. Uh, also this uh, Saturday, it's the uh, uh, Ladies' Day at the Forestdale Church of Christ. For those uh, ladies that are wanting to go to that, uh, please remember that. Uh, let Mary Lou know if you haven't already. She may have already turned in the, uh, I said by last Sunday, so by last Sunday, hopefully you told her that you were planning to go. Let's see, this um, Sunday is also the, th the third Sunday of the week, of the month, so it's going to be song leading in the evening service. So song leaders, uh, start thinking about what you want to lead, particularly if we have a lot of visitors here, that'll be an exciting um, moment. On the 22nd, uh, we're going to have our young men lead the, uh, the worship service that, that night, so that's, uh, that's good to have. And of course, the uh, last Sunday of the month, we have a guest speaker, Ron Gilbert will be speaking to us uh, that evening. We have um, a lot of things to be thankful for. Uh, certainly three new brothers in Christ. A lot of things are going well. There's a lot of people on our prayer list. Please uh, keep in your prayer. Uh, Connie's uh, pneumonia is not giving up. She's still in a lot of pain when she coughs. and So uh, keep her in your prayers, please. And uh, also this month, we have on the 27th, the area-wide uh, monthly singing here will be the host for that. So a lot of things still uh, yet to come this month. Going to start with our scripture reading. Jay, you have it. <clears throat> Again, the scripture reading is Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 17. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 17. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in that evil day. And having done all to stand firm, stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, <clears throat> and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The song after the lesson this evening will be number 31, Almost Persuaded. And the song before the lesson and opening prayer will be number 
36, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 6. Would you please bow with me as we go to God in prayer? Most kind and loving Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the opportunity we have to assemble this evening together. And Father, we're thankful for the, the three young men that have dedicated their lives to you. Father, we pray that each of us as Christians live in a way that will encourage them to continue on their path. And Father, we, we pray that uh, they have opportunities to help others to come to know and to love you as Father we do. We pray that we always use our, all of our means and, and, and knowledge that we gain from these classes that we attend uh, and study your word to help others to come to know and to love you. Father, we're so grateful that you continue to watch out over us and guide, guard, and protect us. And At this time, we ask that you continue to be with those of our number who are sick and uh, have illnesses and are under doctor's care that they regain a measure of comfort that, and wellness that they desire, that they can continue to be uh, workers in your vineyards. And we have those, our number, who are elderly and have um, uh, difficulties with their lives and that they be comforted and, and, and find peace. Father, we, we always thank you for your son Jesus for without him coming to this earth and us having to come through him to you in prayer, we wouldn't have that, and we're so thankful for that. Father, continue to be with our elders as they watch over us, and our deacons as they work, and uh, Father, give us the strength to do our parts. All these things we ask in your son's name, amen. Good evening, it's always a pleasure to be able to bring a lesson uh, to you. I put a little, I'm sure everybody's heard at least probably a dozen lessons on the whole armor of God, but um, try to put it maybe a different spin, give you some different things to uh, think about tonight in, in regards to um, Ephesians uh, 6, 10 through, uh, 10 through 20. I would assume a lot of people have heard this phrase, protect this house. It comes from a uh, typically, a, or has come from a sports marketing uh, standpoint um, a while back, and, and it's taken on many different uh, many different uh, iterations. But um, just a few things to, to consider tonight about uh, protection. Um, how many items do we have 
in our house to protect it. We have furnace filters, we have uh, surge protectors in our house, maybe a whole house surge protector or, or uh, electronics that you value, usually putting those on a, on a surge protector. Uh, water filters in your fridge to filter out impurities. Uh, air filters, I didn't know you needed an air filter in a fridge, but ours has one. Uh, it's, a, it's a hassle to change, but evidently it's, it's worthwhile, I don't know. Um, but uh, some people have water softeners in their, in their homes, uh, termite inspection prevention, uh, painting your house inside and out to, to uh, protect it, locks, uh, alarm systems, security cameras, on and on to protect just your house. So, so kind of think about those things, the things that you have in your, in your particular house just to give that physical entity uh, some protection. How about your vehicle? Um, airbags. I, I, we, my vehicle that I drive is a, a Toyota uh, Sequoia, and I think it has 20 some odd airbags in it. I think, I think the deal is if you, if all the airbags go off in, in, the, uh, in the vehicle, the vehicle's totaled, literally, because there's so many airbags in it that cost so much to replace just the airbag themselves. It's got like front airbags for your knees and side curtain airbags, and I think it's even got a, a thing up above. If you roll the thing over, it's got a ton of them. And so basically it looks like a big marshmallow inside if you have a bad, bad accident. So uh, most modern vehicles today have airbags, and, and those are good things, save thousands, thousands of lives. And they like brakes to, uh, I spelled brakes wrong. That's, that's the right spelling, it's the wrong application there. My fault, uh, should be B-R-A-K-E. Analog brakes on your on your vehicle. I've used those on several occasions, and they're and they're great things. Seat belts. Who doesn't get in a vehicle these days and, and put their seat belt on? I know there are a few people that just you know think they're uh, uh, encumbering on their freedom, but uh, uh, it's wise to uh, obviously wear those. Electronic stability control, where your vehicle uses the uh, power and brakes and applies those to all four wheels if your vehicle is getting out of out of control. Traction control, if you're slipping on snow or or ice or or a rainy road. Uh, an alarm system, somebody's trying to break in your, your car. I, I don't know that too many people pay it, much attention to car alarms these days. They were real, you know, real effective probably 15, 20 years ago when people first started putting them in their vehicles. Now it's, uh, I wish somebody would shut that off. Uh, it's just annoying. So most of the times people are going to ignore them these days. Or how about a trunk monkey? Anybody remember these commercials from back in the day? If you want a good uh, laugh, go to YouTube, I, I think that's still probably a safe uh, thing to, to uh, search on YouTube for is a trunk monkey a commercial. Uh, this is kind of uh, humorous where a monkey comes out of the trunk of this car and hits a guy over the head with a, with a wrench. So if, if you need a good chuckle in the middle of your day, go, go look up trunk monkey. So uh, all these things to protect your vehicle, to protect your house. We could go on and on. Just one more illustration. How much effort do we use to protect uh, our bodies? Uh, wear sunscreen. Should if you're out in an environment, especially on, on water where it reflects. Some people have more issues with that than, than others. Uh, bug repellent, keep mosquitoes off of us, or ticks, or other creepy crawlies if you, uh, if you don't like those things. Uh, police officers wear bulletproof vests, uh, obviously to protect them in their line of duty. Firemen wear turnout gear, uh, helmets, oxygen masks, all those things to protect themselves. Military with body armor, wear a Kevlar helmet, a Kevlar uh, uh, bulletproof vests, oftentimes with a ceramic insert in those to uh, protect from high velocity rounds. A, a bomb disposal tech, if you ever see a bomb disposal tech run by you in their body armor and try to keep up because they're, they're running from, from something. They wear lots of body armor uh, to protect them in case, uh, in case accidents happen and it, and it does work. They have pretty high survival rate, you know, depending on the explosive, but they have a pretty high survival rate from, from their armor. Millions of dollars to protect our country's dignitaries, not just the President of the United States, but uh, congressmen, uh, Supreme Court members, uh, visiting dignitaries, et cetera, et cetera. So there are necessary things to protect physical things. Um, you know, we don't, uh, if we don't protect these things, especially a house or, or, or your body in a hostile environment, those things will be eventually uh, destroyed. If you put up just a wood frame house and you don't uh, put any siding on it or you don't paint it or stain it or whatever, it will eventually rot and deteriorate because the water will get in it and it will uh, just naturally decay if you do not protect it. It will decay over time anyway, but you can prolong that with things to uh, uh, protect it. If those folks in those certain lines of work with the military and, and the firemen, certainly a firefighter going into a burning building is not going to shun their protective equipment. That would be just insane. Um, 
we don't think too much about what's required to protect those things as far as how much money we spend uh, or the time it takes to keep those things uh, up to date to keep uh, from, uh, from those things from deteriorating or your physical, uh, physical body. If you are going to uh, the lake for a fishing trip or the river or something like that, you more than likely aren't going to cost compare what one sunscreen costs versus another. You're going to get some good sunscreen because it's important to you not to get skin cancer uh, later on. Not anything wrong with spending that kind of money. I'm not trying to say disparaging things about anybody's line of work or the, the house that they have and how much they uh, pay to protect that or, or vehicles and searching out what kind of safety features that those uh, those things have. We, we think those things are a necessity. Uh, who who doesn't get in a vehicle and about the first thing you do is put on your seatbelt or you'll get reminded by the dinger if, if you are in a hurry and, and uh, uh, leave the uh, leave your driveway or leave the parking lot without putting on on your seatbelt. But I want to spin it around to thinking about those things into protecting the soul, protecting your soul. How much effort <clears throat> and time and money or whatever, however you want to apply that, do we put into uh, protecting our souls? Do we study uh, the Bible to know what we need to do to be able to please God and to be in his favor? Uh, do we spend time in fellowship with our fellow brothers and sisters in, in Christ? Uh, that's a positive thing. That should be a good influence on us. But it can also be a correcting influence. If we have a brother or sister that's erring, it's our job to try to correct them in, in a loving manner through whatever way that we can be, be an influence. So that's an, certainly an important thing to spend time in fellowship. And sometimes we use that word fellowship a little loosely. If you really read what fellowship means in, in the New Testament, it's, it's a pretty serious thing. It's something that we should absolutely, uh, absolutely consider. Uh, do we turn the radio station whenever we know a song is coming on that doesn't have good lyrics or, or has bad language in it? Do we, do we listen to it anyway? Oh, I wasn't paying attention to the lyrics. I was just listening to the beat. I used that excuse a lot when I was a teenager. Sometimes I didn't really listen to the lyrics, but if you really stop and listen to them, it was usually more about volume than, than quantity or quality, really more about quantity than quality and if you're a teenager from a volume level but we should always listen to those those lyrics and pay attention to what we're uh, what we're hearing we use internet filters at home internet can be a good thing it can be a really horrible thing too it can have a really bad influence and have good influence like most things in life there are things you can buy software you can buy or applications you can put on your uh, internet routers at home that will block websites that are uh, deemed uh, in bad taste or, or pornographic or uh, things like that. Uh, we use uh, filtering devices for uh, services for, for movies and things on Netflix and, and uh, Amazon Prime and those type of streaming services. There, there's a lot of new shows that are on Netflix, but some of them, and maybe a lot of them, are what you would call a little bit edgy in, in the industry, which typically translates into you better be careful what you're, you, you think maybe, you know, uh, a uh, new show put on by a streaming service wouldn't be that bad, but then you start, you know, looking at the reviews or you start watching, it's like, oh, wow, no, I don't, <laughs> there's no way, I, I cannot watch that as a Christian. But there's some services out there, one of them that we use, and I, you know, I'm not a paid endorsement or anything up here, but just something that we use that I found is really useful, and maybe you guys would, or maybe some of you use it, is a service called VidAngel. They had some lawsuits a while back, but they're back in business. Evidently, Disney and a lot of the other companies really wanted you to see and hear all the bad stuff that were in their movies as a whole and not filter out part of it even though you purchased that movie. It's crazy. It's just a society we live in these days. Uh, but they've done some different things and been able to get back in the business. Basically what it is, it's a monthly service and you set up your filters ahead of time and typically it's an app you can download on an Amazon Prime Fire Stick or Hulu or Apple TV I believe, a lot of those streaming services. You download that app, watch the video or movie or TV show through that and that automatically filters everything out. You don't have to do anything. You set those filters ahead of time and you can actually watch a movie that's got a lot of bad language in it or even sexually explicit things and it will filter those things out for you and you really can't tell a difference. Do we turn a TV show or a movie off whenever uh, we know that you know it becomes obvious that this isn't something that myself as a Christian should be, should be watching? When we go to a business function or a big company party or, or whatever, do we take a little 
drink or two just because it's handed to us or we think that's the thing to do to fit in. Maybe that will get us promoted, uh, we think, if we, you know, show that we're a part of the part of the cool group or whatever. And, you know, hey, I can justify that by, hey, you know, if I get this promotion, look how much more I can give back to the church. We shouldn't be thinking like that. That, that obviously is something that Christians should not be participating in in the consumption of alcoholic beverages. And this is a phrase I might have to explain to some of you. Jerry will understand it. I grew up in South Central Missouri in a rural farming community, so a lot of his uh, colloquialisms make absolutely perfect sense to me. But think about this for just a little bit. If, if you hang out in the pig pen, you're going to get some, some mud uh, on you. You can't spend too much time in the pig pen. I don't know if anybody's ever been around pigs, but they stink. I mean, it's bad. Pig farmers, if they're smart, will have their pig pen as far away from their house and uh, away from the prevailing winds as they can because it permeates the air everywhere. It's, it's horrible. Uh, you certainly want to check out any land you're potentially buying a house, for, a house on to put on in, in a rural environment. Make sure there's no, no huge pig farms around you because you, you'll probably want to move. Um, but you can't stay in that pig pen very long. If you talk to a farmer, if you've been around farming, a lot, you know, pig pens are just absolutely nasty. They're, they're, you know, mud all the time. It rains a little bit. It just, they just stay um, soaked in mud almost all the time. In fact, some the farmers back in, you know, still these days, if you have a pond that won't hold water, one of the things you can do to remedy that is to get a bunch of pigs and let them uh, fence that off and make them stay around in the pond. And eventually they will chomp it down and get it to where it will hold water. Um, and that's not an old wives' tale. You can you can use that. So it tells you how much water those pig pens just absorb, and, and typically people don't move those. They just stay. So you get all the pig manure, and all, it just it's nasty. So if you ever get in there, it's you, your clothes will smell like it. Similar to a, kind of an odd transition here, but I don't know if you've ever eaten at Bandanas. If you go into any Bandanas restaurant, that's just the one on St. Peter's, it's the one in O'Fallon or anywhere. I've gone to the one in Rolla. It's the same thing. It's the same smell. In fact, their catchphrase is "smell that smoke." I don't know if they put the smoke in the restaurant. I've eaten at other barbecue restaurants and you don't smell quite as bad as you do coming out of the bandanas, I don't think. But if you go home and take your, you know, if you wore some dress slacks or a dress shirt or whatever, taking that off on Sunday, put it up in the closet, and then you intend to wear that that night and you put it back on. And it was like, wow, I didn't realize that smoke got in my clothes that bad. So in your environment, what you watch, what you see, what you hear, who you hang around with will absolutely affect you one way or the other. Most of the times it's not neutral. It's either going to be positive or negative. I can deal with the pigs a little and not get dirty. Well, if you go into a house, you may not realize it, but when you go in the house, after you've been dealing with the pigs in the pig pen, somebody will tell you, it's like, get those clothes off and the boots out of here because they reek. You don't, you don't realize it, but then when you walk past somebody that hasn't been around that, they will tell you, it's like, look, you stink, man. You need to get out of here. You're, you're going to smell up the whole house. Go out, in the, go out in the porch or whatever and take those boots and your clothes off. I'll wash them, and we'll deal with things later because it's, you know, it's uh, just smelling up the whole house. Your conscience can get callous. We, hear, we, we can find this phrase in the New Testament on several occasions, hardening your heart. It's not talking about your heart calcifying. It's not talking about your heart turning into something physically hard. It's talking about your conscience being seared or your conscience being calloused. You go and talk to any uh, ER nurse, uh, military person has been in combat a lot, especially special forces where they see a lot of death and destruction. You can, you can, if you see an ER nurse around where that's been doing the same thing for 20 years or so, and they come up on a car accident, it's no big deal for them. They've seen severed limbs and people with their bowels hanging out, you know, and just any number of things they can tell you. Not saying that that's healthy for your psyche, but they get numb to that after a while. It's like, oh, hey, there's a hand. We might want to put that in an icebox. Normal person, or, or no, I say a normal person, that's a bad connotation. Somebody that's not in that line of work comes along, and they'll probably, they might pass out. They, they, they'll certainly be much more hyper than that ER nurse or doctor that's come along. It's like, hey, we should probably stick that severed hand in some ice because they'll probably want to try to reattach that later. So your mind and your conscience can get affected and it will get affected by whatever environment that you are constantly in. So how much is your soul worth? You know, people talk about what something is worth all the time. Well, an object is worth whatever somebody will pay for. All right? It depends on 
what the economy is, what the object is, what the person is, you know. I really like older cars. I really love 60s vintage Mustangs. The Shelby Cobra is a really cool car. It's a really fast car, really collectible car. These things in mint condition or restored, numbers matching and all that stuff, go for well into the six figures, if not the seven figures. There's some that sold for over a million dollars. Even if I had a ton of money, I don't think I can enjoy a million dollar vehicle because I would be scared to death. I would put a rock chip in it or something. I, it's one, that's one of those things where you go and put it in a, in a museum or a show place or whatever just for people to look at, at least in my opinion. Some people has got a ton of money might buy one of those and think, yeah, let's take it out on I-70 and see who we can race or whatever, but not me. I couldn't enjoy that. So that's not worth a million dollars to me, but it is somebody else that has a collection or likes to collect those things or wants to put it in a museum or whatever. You know, my ideal my ideal house would be a cabin in, in the mountains or in the forest beside a beside a creek or whatever. I would pay a premium for that. My wife and son that are feeling under the weather that aren't here tonight, theirs is probably on the beach somewhere. I wouldn't pay near as much for a house on the beach as I would for a, a cabin in the woods or in the mountains. That's just who I am and that's just what I prefer. So my value of what something what one thing is worth versus another thing is going to be flip-flop with somebody else that has a, a different opinion. Our artwork is typically described as priceless. I think that's an overused word. Somebody, if you wanted to sell the Mona Lisa at the Louvre, and I think that's where it's at, the Louvre in Paris, I'm not very cultured, but I think that's where it's at in Paris, I believe. Um, if somebody wanted to buy that, I'm pretty sure somebody would scrape up enough money to be able to purchase that from them. So it's not really priceless. Um, it has to have some value on it for the insurance company to be able to underwrite that. So somebody would be willing to pay a steep price for that, to have that into their house and, and collect it. Well, your soul absolutely is priceless. There's no amount of money that can purchase your soul. Uh, there are some denominations that practice some semblance of this to where you can, uh, if Uncle Joe dies, then you can pay some money to that particular denomination and you'll get them lifted up a little, a little higher in, in the Hadean realm to where they won't, they won't be quite as hot. And if you donate a lot of money, they can be almost halfway comfortable, I suppose. Might, might be 78 degrees instead of 178 degrees, I guess. I don't know where they find that concept in the Bible. Good fundraiser, but you don't find that, uh, you don't find that concept in the Bible at all. So it doesn't matter how rich or how poor you are. It doesn't matter how, who your family is, how connected you are. Your soul is absolutely priceless. That's the only thing that you own that's priceless. That's really the only thing you own that's really worth anything. I don't care what kind of car you drive, what kind of house you live in, your soul is really the only thing that you own that you can say is, has any value. All this other stuff is gonna burn up. Uh, I don't know if you know the Smiths down at Pacific, but they're really good to us at, at, at church camp and let us borrow some things and, and this and that, really good. Jim, Jimmy's attitude is that everything's gonna burn up anyway, so it doesn't matter. Don't worry about, don't worry about using it. Everything's gonna burn up anyway. And that's really the attitude we should have. Everything's gonna be destroyed that we own one of these days, no matter how precious it is, but our soul won't be. Your soul has an eternal home. It's either gonna be, after judgment day, either gonna be in heaven or hell, depending on how you've lived. It's up to you where that home for your soul is going to be. It's not up to me, it's not up to the elders here, it's not up to uh, whoever your parents are, your brother, your sister, aunt, uncle, doesn't it's an individual thing. And that's your choice as to where that home is going to be. Well, let's put this application in, in the whole armor of God quickly and, and wrap this up. So I think the key verse here in this uh, whole armor of God, the armor of God passages is commonly referred to is, is verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So we're not wrestling against the physical things of this earth. We're wrestling against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. You boil that down and we're not, we're not fighting against physical things. We're not fighting a physical battle. We're fighting against the devil. And, and we could replace that whole phrase after, uh, uh, after flesh and blood with, but against the devil. That's what we are uh, fighting against. And so we need to, need to uh, gird ourselves and put on the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness like this passage in Ephesians 6 tells us, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation in order to be in the sword of the spirit, uh, which is the word. 
in order to fully equip ourselves to armor ourselves against those principalities, against the devil. Um, we can't do it without that. We can't do it without, without all those things. We need to have a complete picture of that, um, of that armor. Instead of protect this house, we should be the most concerned about protecting this soul, our soul, your soul. We should put everything that we, all our effort that we can into protecting that. So come judgment day, we will have a home in heaven with God. If you're here tonight and you have uh, not obeyed the gospel, if you've heard of the word and you know what you need to do uh, in order to uh, obey the gospel, we would invite you to uh, do that in a moment as we uh, sing the invitation song. Or if you have put on Christ in baptism, but you uh, uh, need the prayers of the congregation for whatever reason, we would offer you that opportunity as we stand and as we sing. Of our closing prayer. Let's pray together. Dear God in heaven, we come offering our thanks for the day that you have allowed us to enjoy. We thank you, Father, for the time that we've been privileged to gather together here and hear your word proclaimed. We're thankful to Jamie for pointing out to us the value of our souls. Father, help us to be reminded more often and to take care that we do protect our soul. We thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you for being able to freely proclaim it here in this country. We pray that we'll always have that ability. We pray for our upcoming Friends and Family Day that we might uh, have the opportunity to bring others to hear the gospel. We thank you now for the time that we're about to spend in study of your word. We pray, Father, we'll always cultivate our hearts that when we hear the word proclaimed that it might uh, take root in our soul and produce fruit. We thank you, Father, for the blessings that we enjoy because Christ was willing to give his life and shed his blood that we might have the remission of sin. Go with us as we continue in this study tonight. Forgive us, Father, for we fall short of serving you as we should. We ask these blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.